exactly 20 minutes to the top of the hour. You're right in time for our first conversation this Wednesday morning on our segment Women in Leadership. Basically just what we're looking at is women in places of influence, places of leadership and just looking at what it took for them to get into these positions and what they are doing in this position and also the underlying challenges and loopholes and how to deal with that. That is part of what forms center of our conversation at this moment. And I am holding court with Dr. Susan El Garabawi, who is the Vice Chair UNESCO, also the Head of Marine Geophysics Department at the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries. That is in Egypt, yes. right? <laughs> thank you. That, that's right. Yeah. Welcome to the program, Dr. Dr. Thank Susan. you so much and thank you for having me with <laughs> you here in, in Kenya mm. as a country and also in the TV of Kenya, official TV. And good morning, Kenya. Yes. <laughs> good morning, all the African countries. I hear you. Right, just before we get to who you are and why you're in the country and the mm -hmm. programs you're set to do, let's just begin with the basics. Oceanography. Okay. What is this? Uh, oceanography is the main life we have mm -hmm. because everything in our planet start by water mm -hmm. and what we have in Africa we are very 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 lucky mm -hmm. at the continent that we are surrounding with a lot of oceans mm -hmm. the Indian the Atlantic and also the Mediterranean Sea mm -hmm. so I found it hard for African countries and African people not to know about oceanography mm -hmm. they they must be aware mm -hmm. because this is the main resource we had mm -hmm. especially for the future mm -hmm. all the world are looking for the blue economy the blue economy is all the resources that is coming from oceans yeah. and they fight and go harder who will be responsible or who, who will control these resources okay. and for us as African countries as we say we have a lot of waters mm -hmm. territorial waters mm -hmm. and also we could get use of the international waters this we could we could talk about this later yeah. uh, because this is also an opportunity mm -hmm. especially for African countries mm -hmm. what is oceanography mm -hmm. it's simply it's the marine environment mm -hmm. as we have a terrestrial environment we have also the same on marine mm -hmm. marine we could talk about the biodiversity in the marine mm -hmm. including fisheries uh, coral reefs sea grasses um, bottom faunas all the marine biota that live in the water column and on the sediment mm -hmm. uh, uh, seabed floor okay other we I could talk about also the oceanography from the physical oceanography, like the ocean currents, the waves, mm -hmm. the sea surface temperatures, and how this affects our climate, how this affects mm -hmm. the uh, transportation of uh, the currents, affects uh, uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. All of this uh, is also under the umbrella of oceanography. Okay. We could also talk about geology. Mm -hmm. Marine geology and marine geophysics is an important field in mm -hmm. oceanography because we have to know how the seafloor is, um, its features, uh, the structure of it, what is formed from uh, rocks, type of rocks, type of sediments, uh, their grain size also affect uh, very well in the settlement of the uh, biodiversity on the seafloor. Mm -hmm. Oil and gas. <laughs> So it's quite minerals. Holistic, basically. So whatever we will have on environment mm -hmm. is important to uh, study in the marine field. I hear you. So is it safe for us to say that basically just in, in, in um, easier terms that oceanography is a branch of science that largely deals with properties of marine and sea life? Yeah. In, 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 just in, easy way, yeah. in easy way, not as, not with the scientific uh, yeah, <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this that's is, correct to say that. Yeah, but this is the marine, the marine environment okay. at all. Okay, yes. I hear you. But there's something you said while you're responding to what oceanography is that you said that you wondered why people don't even know or understand what this is. Yeah. Why? Why do you say that? Yeah, because this is what we feel when we are working and start to ask people uh, their backgrounds about oceanography or what there are backgrounds about the resources we had. Few, few numbers that uh, know the real answers or the true answers. Let let us so, mm -hmm. uh, let us say. Uh, others could talk generally 
with some mistakes mm -hmm. and others know nothing. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call ocean literacy. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the main programs that the IOC is working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. During this ocean decade. All right. So then tell us more about who you are. I mean, you, you have so many titles and I think <laughs> your name acquired so much. Yeah. You know, we keep saying that especially as women getting into position of influence mm -hmm. and leadership is not easy. It's not That's easy, what this yes. segment is always all about, just looking at women who've got in there to the top ladder and mm -hmm. some of these loopholes that still exist and looking for better ways to seal them, if I should say. So really, who is Dr. Susan <laughs> El Garabawi? Okay. Uh, I'm just a marine uh, researcher. I'm the head of the Marine Geophysics Department at the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries. Mm -hmm. This is in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, the institution that I f uh, affiliated to is um, one of the oldest institution in mm -hmm. all Africa. It's mm -hmm. It established from 1918, so it's more than 100 years now working on oceanography and uh, studying the ocean science. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, our uh, institution is um, have this uh, ranked uh, at the first on Africa and the Middle East mm -hmm. in the Saimago uh, research institution ranking mm -hmm. and this is make us or put on us a huge responsibility to start to lead the ocean mm -hmm. science in all Africa and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. For myself I'm the head of the marine geophysics department mm -hmm. I'm also have the honor to be the uh, IOC Africa vice chair mm -hmm. for the uh, subcommission of Africa and Arab states. Yeah. I also have other responsibilities, mm -hmm. <laughs> like um, the executive director of the technology and innovation office mm -hmm. in my institution and also the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. uh, club for improving the innovations for early career students mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. um, I work a lot with the international UN programs, mm -hmm. especially for the International Seabed Authority for deep sea mining mm -hmm. and uh, deep ocean research and ocean exhibitions all over the, o the world oceans like in the Pacific and the Atlantic oceans. Mm -hmm. We make a lot of exhibitions there for marine exploration. Mm -hmm. So I'm part of it. I'm also part of the, uh, the women in empowering the women in marine deep sea mining mm -hmm. committee of I, uh, ISA. Mm -hmm. We work a lot in this field, which mm -hmm. is very important to to know how we could empower women, especially from um, the LDCs and island uh, states. Mm -hmm. What what are these LDCs and island states? Low developed uh, countries okay. and the island lo low developed countries right. also, because those two categories have less uh, opportunities to go for training or to go for ship uh, exhibitions. So we give them the priority to take this uh, positions or this initiatives mm -hmm. and help them to go through. Mm -hmm. We'll come to this LDC and the island areas in a short while for you to tell us even um, which places and areas and countries perhaps you've been to as far as this empowering is concerned. But before then, talk to me also about how you got into this space. All right, we understand who you are and what you do and the mm -hmm. many titles underneath your name. Yeah. But also, how did you get into this space? Marine okay. sea life. <laughs> <laughs> Marine sea life is very interesting. When you just enter this area, you could never go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much as they say, it's a uh, men's kind of dominated field. And this is our struggle. <laughs> we we'll come to, to that. Work. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. We'll come to that. Yeah, yeah. because w when we started, uh, I started after my graduation mm -hmm. from uh, the uh, college. Mm -hmm. I graduated from marine environment. Uh, uh, I have my bachelor degree in marine environment. Then I started my work in marine environment. Uh, in uh, the oceanography institution in Egypt. I mm -hmm. uh, started by my master's and PhD, then I graduated. Still in the same? Uh, yes, in the same institution. Mm -hmm. but I'm still, still in the same um, field, marine? Marine, yeah, but I got a different discipline inside the umbrella. Right. The marine environment is a huge umbrella, mm -hmm. so sometimes I work for pollution, mm -hmm. sometimes I work for climate change, mm -hmm. other times for oil and gas, mm -hmm. other times for archaeology. Mm -hmm. 
So you have a lot of disciplines to do under mm -hmm. this huge uh, umbrella. Mm -hmm. But what I really like mm -hmm. is the exhibitions, mm -hmm. the surveys we did on, on board the research vessels. Mm -hmm. We are we at the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries have two research vessels. Mm -hmm. One of them, I rule it, or I'm the chief scientist of it, and it's a great honor to me to say that I'm the first woman to be the chief scientist of our research vessels. And this comes from what we have did during the last years. We worked mm -hmm. hard, we struggled and say, no, we could do that. Because as you know, this maritime area is only blocked for men. Yeah. And they never let you in. I mean, really in itself, it's a big achievement as the first woman researcher in your yes. own right. Yes, yes. But is this really what you wanted to do? Marine, sea life, ocean, yeah, oil and this gas? this is what I like. Because it's really fascinating right. when you are in this trip with the, only the ocean and the sky and you are exploring new areas, this is really nice. <laughs> this is where your heart is. Yeah. We'll come to the this challenges. This is really passion, yes. Oh, passion mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We'll come to the challenges in a short while because, I mean, there's really quite a lot to discuss in that regard. I mean, just while I was preparing for this, I came across the fact that um, it's only beginning 1960, that's when women were allowed to travel in the ocean vessel. Mm -hmm. So before then, mm -hmm. you couldn't be allowed. It was only men who were allowed. It's only men, yes. We'll come to that in a short while. But before then, tell me why you're in the country. Is it for the same purpose? Are there programs related to this that you're undertaking? Yeah, here in Kenya, you right. mean? Yes, we are here uh, to attend and organizing the seventh session for the IOC Africa Subcommission mm -hmm. Assembly. Mm -hmm. This meeting is uh, prepared every two years. Mm -hmm. So under the umbrella of the IOC, uh, to let people know what is IOC. Mm -hmm. IOC is the Intergovernmental Ocean Committee mm -hmm. and it follows the UNESCO. Uh, it first established in 1960 mm -hmm. for the whole world yeah. and uh, first with 150 member states. Mm -hmm. Then in, nine, in 2012 we have our subcommission for Africa and Arab states yes. and it's located here in Kenya in Nairobi in the Eastern Office of UNESCO here. Mm -hmm. Uh, from this date, from 2012, mm -hmm. we start to have our meetings and our programs to how we will work on African countries, how we could help the African states to improve their oceanof uh, oceanographic studies, oceanographic programs, mm -hmm. use the sustainable use of the resources, mm -hmm. and the main important, as I told you, is mm -hmm. the ocean literacy yeah. also. Yeah. How to we make a capacity building for those institutions that working on marine oceanography. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really like is that the program of the young career uh, professions yeah. for the ECOPS, we have a great program for them for improving their skills and capabilities. Mm -hmm. This is what the main targets we are working on. Mm -hmm. So do, we will start our session today. Mm -hmm. It starts from 15 to 17. Mm -hmm. uh, during these three days, mm -hmm. we have uh, all the member states of the IOC Africa Subcommission. Mm -hmm. uh, they will attend and start to discuss what we have did during the past two years, mm -hmm. and we are preparing what we are preparing for the next two years, mm -hmm. 20, from 2023 to 2025. Mm -hmm. Our plan for the next uh, two years also, and what is the main priority programs that we will work on. Mm -hmm. So this this began when, did you say 2012? 2012, 2012. for the Subcommission of Africa, first, but right. for the whole IOC, mm -hmm. it starts from 1960. 1960. Mm -hmm. So let's just stick to Africa for a moment, because this began in, <coughs> in 2012. This is 10 plus years. Yes. And you look at some of these programs, including training, capacity building, ocean literacy. How has it been? What has been the um, the positive impact of this program mm -hmm. when you look at this sector or this area that is ocean? Yes, we during those twelve years we yeah. already had many uh, programs that have been done. Okay. We had a lot of initiatives for the young career uh, students to go to different. Um, marine institutions mm -hmm. to have training 
and also to uh, work on the new technology uh, equipments. Mm -hmm. uh, some others have their master's degrees. Uh, we could give them this opportunity to go abroad and have their master's or PhD mm -hmm. or even in their countries mm -hmm. by giving them funds to make their uh, ac uh, master's. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, we are have this global network for data management, mm -hmm. managing and also for uh, the uh, observation. What we lack in Africa is the data mm -hmm. observation. Mm -hmm. We had along coastal areas, mm -hmm. coastal lines, but not all of these areas are covered and when measured. When you say data observation, what do you mean? I mean observing and uh, measuring the main physical parameters of oh the right. ocean, okay. the temperature, the, the sea surface temperature, mm -hmm. the pH. pH mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. because we are facing this acidification mm -hmm. problem due to climate change. Mm -hmm. And also observing the currents, the tides, sea level rise. Uh, this is also one of the parameters is important to measure due to the climate change issues also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a, a lot to observe, mm -hmm. like also the biota. Uh, the biological life should be observed, mm -hmm. especially for the coral reefs, the sea grasses. All of those are very important to be observed mm -hmm. uh, because they are in risk. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to protect them. So yes. when you look at these programs, just allow me to stick there for a short while. Does it cut across both men and women or is it women alone? In whichever way, yes. why? <laughs> Let us say that mm -hmm. for for men, they are dominating. <laughs> we still <laughs> so underrepresented. They are good enough. But we already had started, and we had our willing to have. And what from the main the main SDGs we have oh. during this uh, ocean decade, oh. 2020, uh, 2021, 2030, mm. is the gender equality. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are working on. All the UN organizations give the priority to women. Mm. But the problem we face, we don't have girls to apply. Mm. Uh, when, when we make this announce and we want people to go abroad or to go on board the research vessels or to have mm. training, the number of girls that apply is still so little. Mm -hmm. So what we are working on now is to give them this push, mm -hmm. help them to, to feel that it's okay, you yeah. could you could do this. Mm -hmm. You are strong enough to do that. Yeah, I hear you. And I want us to take a very quick breather, but when we come back, we now come to look at some of these issues. You've just talked about um, men are dominating, mm -hmm. and so the whole idea also is to see how we can increase uh, or upscale women into some into, into this field, you know, yes. the field of science. And can you keep talking about um, STEM? Subjects, for instance. STEM subjects, yes. yes. This is very important. The engineering, what the yes, we don't the see women here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we also want to look at um, perhaps as you talk about gender equality, and of course, this features in the SDG. Just what more mm -hmm. can be done, you know, outside from what is being done, which is good enough by itself, but also what more can be done because you realize again there's quite a number of issues. Just again, while I was preparing for this, I came across that matters of sexual harassment, women still face this in this particular yes. field and of course you know this cuts across mm -hmm. but i mean when you look at some of these fields that where you see even women less you need to get more encouragement for them to get into this space mm -hmm. but if can they can face discrimination sexual harassment then how will we get them into these spaces we look at that okay. the challenges and also the technologies how africa um can adopt some of these capacities to continue to increase on some of these technologies that mm -hmm. are available into these spaces and how we can improve you know our continent as far as that is concerned i also want us to look at the difference between egypt and kenya yeah in regards to you know um, this ocean of, exactly yes. in terms yes. of science mm -hmm. is it any different is it the same mm -hmm. are we doing any, anything <laughs> different from what you're doing mm -hmm. are you doing any, anything different from what we are doing and how perhaps you can borrow mm -hmm. and just try and see how we can make the african continent a good but a big block as far as some of these issues yes. are concerned. Yeah. Now we take that breather. Of course, you've just had, there's really plenty more to discuss after this break, so don't go anywhere. Stay with us.
it's now official. Don't worry about that. Just parks of live TV. Sometimes it happens. Anyway, welcome back to the program. We definitely appreciate your valid company and we continue apace with our conversation still holding court with Dr. Susan L. Garabawi, who's the Vice Chair UNESCO, IOC Africa. That is the Intergovernmental um, Ocean Committee of Africa. Also, she's the Head of Marine Geophysics um, Department at the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisher Fisheries that is in Egypt. And we're just also tracking um, the reason as to why she's in Kenya and basically as far as oceanography is concerned. Dr. Susan, before we took that break, we're now just looking at some of those um, challenges and looking at better ways um, to deal with them. Of course, this also time with the different programs that have been undertaken so far. And so then I was just wanted to find out from you um, when you look at these programs that you've talked about, talk about training, capacity building, ocean literacy, is it cut across men and women? Is it only mm -hmm. women alone? And you're telling me that men already are dominating. Yeah, this is the main problem. Yeah. We still have this lack of access to women to mm -hmm. the STEM science at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not only for marine science or maritime sector, mm -hmm. but for the STEM, you, even for engineering, for flight pilots, mm -hmm. you don't have them as a reasonable number. Mm -hmm. Also for maritime, you don't have a, a ship captain, a, mm -hmm. a woman, mm -hmm. only few numbers all over the world. It's mm -hmm. This lack of access, even for the marine science, as as to be on board a research vessel, mm -hmm. it was blocked for men for centuries. Mm -hmm. It's only to find a few members of women that could have this opportunity yeah. is very few all over the world. Yeah. Measure this to Africa. Yes. <laughs> it's even worse. It's a little. A but little. we are on the way, mm -hmm. I could say. I, we I are find making the progress future, Yes, we have progress and the future is, is with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, the whole idea of this segment is trying to see how we can break that ceiling. That glass ceiling that has been mm -hmm. set and see just take account of women who've already gone ahead and see how we can encourage those women who are coming up that indeed they can get into these spaces of leadership spaces mm. of influence it has not been set aside for a specific gender as long as you're well able and capable you're good mm -hmm. to go but just from where you sit and perhaps you can even pick examples from egypt for instance what really has um, hampered women so much. So why I ask this, ask this is because yes, it has been male-dominated field and we've seen, just as you rightfully said, men taking um, the top positions. But over time we have had programs, mm. we have had initiatives that encourage women to do this. I mean, you yourself you just said mm. that you are in a bid of empowering women to get into these spaces. Yes. But still, it's, yes, progress is being made, but not quite there yet. Okay. We had made this survey at a map for gender mapping all over the African countries. Mm -hmm. I, the, we send the surveys for girls and women that are working in the field of oceanography or for marine science at all. Mm -hmm. And the results we got that what the top uh, um, challenge they have is the gender stereotype. Mm -hmm. Why they have this? They always say that when we are in an institution or in a place mm -hmm. where there is men and women are working on the same place mm -hmm. for marine science all the managers give the big responsibilities to men mm -hmm. not to give them to the women mm -hmm. despite they are well skilled mm -hmm. and by this this women are couldn't express all their skills or what they have or mm -hmm. what they could do mm -hmm. they only have this small work inside the lab or even a uh, office work mm -hmm. and they didn't allow them to go on board research vessels or to do job uh, important uh, issues mm -hmm. or by this they plug their way to be a leadership because okay. to be a leadership you have to make a lot of progress yeah, and a lot and of... And you have to keep doing it. Yes, yes. This was the main problem. Mm. And this is the problem have to be solved from the managers themselves. Mm -hmm. That institutions have to change their strategy and mm -hmm. give a woman a little bit more space mm -hmm. <laughs> to work. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, there is, from the beginning, as yeah. we was talking about the STEM studies, yes. there, there is no enough opportunities for women to go in this uh, field of science. 
but now we could encourage our girls to go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. You could do and go for science, for engineering. It's easy. And in Egypt, we already have a lot of students that are working on those fields and mm -hmm. they do uh, progress. Mm -hmm. I, when I was in the college, I, was, I graduated the first on, the, on my class yeah. and it was yeah. good to, to be a girl and to be the first on the class. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, there is a, this gender-based uh, culture idea mm -hmm. about women. Mm -hmm. So what we are working now on is to how we could switch or change this culture yeah. point of view to women. Yeah. I start from the families, so yes. I'm here asking all the parents to give the opportunity and to give the chances, the chan uh, chances yeah. to their girls to go and study STEM uh, educations to to have their own career. Mm -hmm. We are strong, and we could do that. Yeah. At the same time, we find not all the women have this mentorship. They don't have this. Uh, models or idols that they could look for and say okay we could do like what maybe she did or uh, and also this mentorship programs is very important yeah. why because we will build their characters build their responsibility give them confidence that they could do this mm -hmm. and at the same time we could give them from our experience mm -hmm. so they will be more skilled. I hear you. I want us to come to what your vision is for the future of Africa as far as oceanography is concerned and also the technology that perhaps can mm -hmm. be adopted. But before we do that, I just want you to elucidate on, uh, some of these issues that you, that you talked about. You've touched on culture, touched on managers and employers and also mentorship. But I want us to dwell just for a short moment, particularly on culture, mm -hmm. simply because you realize that um, we are a product of culture, environment, and it's really cultures deprooted and we said that there's some cultures which are retrogressive we need to shun and move away from that mm. but you realize this is going to be take this is going to perhaps take a long time before this happens from where you sit what can we do about some of these issues because we can talk about this oftentimes but you realize there are people that still think mm -hmm. even in a working environment particularly work a is for a man Work B is for a woman, and these are elites. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm tying culture to the managers and employers. These are elites. So, how much more, even as you touch, even as you talked about families, how much more that mother, that father in the village who still thinks that my daughter cannot do engineering, cannot mm -hmm. do oceanography, cannot do science? I mean, maybe if they have to do career, maybe education. No, just sometimes. Yes, they prefer the uh, culture or the arts field, yeah, not exactly. the science field. But then, field, who yes. said? Mm -hmm. So. What, what, what can we do to begin sort of like changing this mindset? Because mm -hmm. you realize it's a mindset kind of issue. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is why I told we have to start it from the families. All right. So family is very key in this Yes, one. yes. Okay. Especially the parents. Mm -hmm. I, I could take about my uh, experience in this issue. Yes, please. As you know, we come from our country, mm -hmm. Muslim country. Yeah. So in our region, mm -hmm. it's not okay for a girl to go on board research vessels mm. abroad mm -hmm. in the Pacific Ocean mm. and what I'm talking about so that was on 20 2008 mm -hmm. so it's a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> ago mm -hmm. uh, but when I have this initiative it was given to me by the International Seabed Authority for Exhibition just hold it there Dr. Susan we want to check your mic just for a short while but yeah. I mean this is still what we are conversing about just it's looking at some of this issue our main focus is centered on oceanography just trying to understand um, this branch of science that deals with properties of marine and sea life and also looking at the uptake and the upscale of women in some of these spaces, spaces and basically also what we're looking into is how we can shift the culture how we can shift the mindset how we can look into perhaps even what employers and managers are doing as far as getting women into these spaces is concerned dr susan you're just telling me mm. you know just tying down culture yeah employers managers to yes. your own story yes, that's, yes that was very inspiring for me and mm -hmm. for others mm -hmm. whenever I talk about this story given I you come from a Muslim Arab country yes and I found that the audience said you inspiring us mm -hmm. that will tell me that okay I'm do what I have to do mm -hmm. <laughs> 
uh, let us, uh, by this time, I have this initiative from the International Seabed Authority to, okay. to be on board our research vessels for two months uh -huh. in the Pacific Ocean. Uh -huh. So that was one of my dreams, uh -huh. but how you will say to your family something like that. Yeah. And how, how do you even convince them you convince have to? Convince them and how they will accept something yeah. like that. Yeah. Always start to say this is okay, this is good for my career mm. and I like it and I, I need it. It, is, it will be safe. Mm. But who, what parents could understand this? But, but do they accept it? Finally, Eventually, they accept. After a lot of push and pull and convincing? To be honest, uh, my dad supports me a lot, mm -hmm. which, which make it so easier. So you, you at least had that family support? Yes, uh, which make, me, which make the, it easier for me. Oh, yeah. But for, for a mom... Mm -hmm. It's a bit it's, difficult. Yeah, yeah. But at, le at, the, at the end, I traveled mm -hmm. and I have the whole experience. Mm. Uh, after that, after I returned it back to Egypt, mm -hmm. all the girls in the institution start to apply for the same mm -hmm. initiative again. Mm -hmm. And they, okay, we find you, Susan, do it and succeed it, so why not we mm -hmm. will not do. Mm -hmm. What impressing me more, that I find other men start to apply <laughs> and say, look, she's a girl and she d if she's, she's done it, it we can also do it <laughs> yes and i mean that's what this segment is all about this is basically mm -hmm. what it is all about so this but is I the mentorship we are talking yeah, about yes. exactly mm -hmm. but also there's again something you did mention um that in egypt mm -hmm. at least the numbers are increasing just just if if you're previewed to the data for example is it more compared to kenya from what you've gathered or what you know? Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't know the numbers of right. exact numbers of Kenya, okay. but I could talk about uh, what we had in Egypt. Yeah. Now we and our and perhaps how you are upscaling, you know, women's yes, this business. Yes. yes, in our institution, we are something like now forty percent. So we are that's doing almost the, half mark. Yes, okay. but still, the leaderships are mm -hmm. less represented mm -hmm. to somehow, and the important thing is the marine research uh, vessels to be on board our research vessels so mm -hmm. uh, this is what we are working on now mm -hmm. to uh, make it available for the girls to go mm -hmm. but the problem as i told you we don't have this much number of girls that apply mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we are trying to confess them to do <laughs> let me just believe that now you're in the country for this three days with the programs that you're mm -hmm. undertaking and also you being in this space already and talking to you know women who are watching and listening perhaps this might sort of like twitch their yeah, mind a please, bit please. <laughs> <laughs> all right so talk to me about your vision on the future of ocean science in mm -hmm. africa and of course as you respond to that you can also uh, be telling me how since after 1960 that women were not at least allowed to sail through the oceanographic vessels if at all that has changed that tying down with the vision you have for ocean science mm -hmm. in the african continent Okay. For the African continent, we are working hard for the sustainable management of the ocean mm -hmm. we had. Yeah. What, mean we, what we mean by the sustainable management is we have a lot of resources in the oceans. Mm -hmm. What we call it the blue economy. Mm -hmm. We need to improve our resources, mm -hmm. protect our resources to mm -hmm. be sustainable mm -hmm. and to keep it for the future generations. Mm -hmm. One of the most important problems we face is the overfishing yeah. on our waters. Okay. All the African waters. But have someone would say we illegal. are dealing with issues of food security, so yes, we are illegal, <laughs> illegal fishing. Okay. This is unacceptable anymore. Mm -hmm. We have to secure our resources. Mm. This is not ours. This is for the future. Mm -hmm. it's, for, it's for the sea and marine life. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have to manage this in mm -hmm. a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. Stop this illegal fishing, unreported fishing. Mm -hmm. we, those are the main problems we had. Mm -hmm. We also uh, working a lot uh, on the aquaculture. Okay. The aquaculture is a source or a resource for um, 
fishes and uh, food security, as mm -hmm. you say. Mm -hmm. And also, at the same time, we could protect our oceans clean mm -hmm. but, uh, if we make it on land. Mm -hmm. And if we go for the marine aquaculture yeah. sector, yeah. it will be also okay, but under regulations, because under we regulations. have to uh, protect our environment. Okay. The other thing we are working on, also the program on the climate change. Mm -hmm. This is a global problem not only for African countries. Mm. Uh, we are facing this sea level rise, mm -hmm. we are facing uh, some of uh, the biota that it changes their behaviors mm. or it change from place to place. Invasive species we now could uh, face also and the coral reefs and the sea grasses are mm -hmm. in danger. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we mm -hmm. are working a lot to protect those uh, important resources. Mm -hmm. One of the programs also is the um, data managing and observing. Mm -hmm. So when we observe, when you have the data, you could control, mm -hmm. you could take the right decisions. How we could say that we need to protect this area, and this is a priority and this is not, mm -hmm. without having a clear right data. Mm -hmm. So to have this network of observation mm -hmm. for the whole continent, African mm -hmm. continent, mm -hmm. is a must. Mm -hmm. And we are working on it now. Mm -hmm. The observations for protecting the environment, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the observation is important also for making our coastal uh, areas resilient. Yeah. And also to protect them against the natural hazard we may face, like tsunamis or mm -hmm. storm surges, mm -hmm. or even the sea level rise. Okay. Now, now that you're saying that we have a lot of resources in our oceans, mm -hmm. and you really brought forth also quite a number of issues that we can, you know, not not issues, but you brought forth um, quite what we can do to sort of like protect, you know, this a lot of resources that we have. But before we get even to that, I just want to get get from you. Do we even know that we have a lot of resources? Yeah. Especially, are mm -hmm. we? as an African bloc, are we aware of that? Why I ask that is because mm -hmm. you've just also said that there's a lot of activities that we are doing which is hampering the marine mm -hmm. and sea life. Mm -hmm. So then do we understand what we have? Maybe we need to start from there. Okay. We know that we have fisheries and yeah. <laughs> we know that we have, but the way we deal with those mm -hmm. uh, resources is the wrong way. That's a problem. This is the problem. Okay. Yeah. We have resources. Everyone knows that we have resources. Mm -hmm. Especially the life resources because we could see it directly. Okay. What is hard to know about is the resources underneath the ocean bottom, like mm -hmm. the oil and gas mm. and the minerals. This needs a special uh, uh, technology to explore. Mm -hmm. And, we'll, and we'd, mm -hmm. we definitely have to talk about that technology before we get to wrap up much as we have about, is it 10 minutes to do this? Mm -hmm. But again, there's something also that um, I want you to perhaps elucidate a bit further. That yes, we talked about even the fishing activities and perhaps you can help us understand how, how can we um, get a good balance? Because right now, especially in the African continent and what you call the Horn of Africa, mm -hmm. we are reeling a lot with issues of food security. Mm -hmm. Talk about Kenya, Somalia, Inu and the likes. So then we can safely say, or some can safely say that it's because of the hunger issues the famine issues, that's why we'll go, that's why we'll go all the way. But again, as you, as you also say, that we need to, pro to be protecting this marine life, especially those that we can see, mm -hmm. like the fish, for instance. Mm -hmm. How do we balance this? The marine life and what the humans yes. are dealing with. What we need, the food security is something like national security. Okay. You couldn't protect your country without even feed your your people. Mm -hmm. So to have these resources secured, we need to make, to go through the uh, law mm -hmm. and don't use the law in the right way. Mm -hmm. The problem is we have this illegal fishing. Mm -hmm. They use sorts of nets with small uh, holes that is block even the very very small fries mm -hmm. so they stop the cycle for mm -hmm. the fish to complete and grow to be adult okay. this is one big issue that destroyed the mm -hmm. the fisheries in and our waters the other thing that they start to fish the good quality fishes mm -hmm. and sell it 
back. Mm. This is the unreported fisheries. Mm -hmm. So they get it, they get they it and sell it, sell it. They don't while, even use it. while they are in the waters. Okay. They didn't return back to to the country. You, you get what I mean? I get it. Yes, they have their fishing vessels, they fish, mm -hmm. the, all the stock they have, they sell it to other countries or mm -hmm. other... <laughs> for their own gains. For their own gains. So this is the unreported, uh, what we mean by unreported fisheries, mm -hmm. because all of this stock is not counted in our country's mm -hmm. stocks, and we didn't even get used of it mm -hmm. for uh, to feed our people or at least to have economy from it. Mm -hmm. So it means that, I mean, there's really a lot we need to be doing, much as we need to get that balance between yes. dealing with issues of food security as an African bloc mm -hmm. and protecting our marine and sea life. Yeah. All right. So let's come to technologies. And I just want to get from you how Africa can strengthen their capacity to sustain yes. this new technology. This is the main program, we, one of the main programs we are working on. Uh, to have these new technologies, we you need financial okay. support. Okay. And what we working on now <coughs> is to have funds to get these new technologies to the institutions that are working on marine science. Mm -hmm. This is one category we are working on. Mm -hmm. The other category is to share our resources with other countries. Mm -hmm. And this is the main target we in the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries in Egypt mm -hmm. are working on. We already have these two research vessels, one is special for fisheries studies mm -hmm. and the other is for marine exploration. Mm -hmm. The one for the marine exploration that I'm um, the, the chef scientist of uh, this research vessel. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had all the well equipped new technology mm -hmm. uh, in instruments mm -hmm. for uh, environmental studies, monitoring, water monitoring, pollution monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, bathymetric surveys for seabed uh, feature uh, bathymetry and seabed characteristic mapping, mm -hmm. uh, imaging the seafloor by sonar, even the subsea. We could also use the seismic uh, instruments to uh, identify the oil and gas uh, where, it, mm -hmm. where it is, the, the traps and re the reservoirs. Mm -hmm. Also, we could uh, we work on the archaeology. Mm -hmm. We work for habitat mapping, for saving the coral reefs. Mm -hmm. So all of these technologies is open for all the African countries. Mm -hmm. And this is what we announced during the last uh, kick of conference for priorities mm -hmm. and challenges in Africa that was held and hosted in Egypt, mm -hmm. Cairo, mm -hmm. during May 2022. Mm -hmm. Our president of the institution, Professor Hamouda, mm -hmm. had announced clearly that it's our resources and capabilities is open for all the African countries mm -hmm. to come and and have the training on board our research vessels, mm -hmm. on, on board our labs, and on, on our labs, on uh, on all the branches of the institution, because okay. we have a lot of branches that cover all Egypt, Red Sea, and Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. uh, so from here, I'm also give uh, announce again: we are open to have uh, all the African students. One of the main implementation uh, things we have did is. Uh, Egypt or the National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries is the implementing partner for the ocean decade. Mm -hmm. What this means that we are responsible for training for all the African countries mm -hmm. during the whole decade under the umbrella of the IOC. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we already had made this MOU for training and a scientific exchange between the Oceanographic Institution in Egypt and the Oceanographic Institution in Kenya. Mm. So we are now open to have this exchange. It's like a partnership. Yes. Yeah, and you know, you just did mention trading, and that orients my next question in that regard. That I'll just also like to get the structure how these trainings, you know, would look like, especially mm -hmm. for the different African countries, given the fact that some of this um, technology that you're talking about could sound or be perhaps very sophisticated so then how does the structure look like for these trainings yeah uh, we could give them this first theoretical uh, training mm -hmm. so they know the methodology the the uh, structure of each instrument mm -hmm. how it work to know everything about it mm -hmm. this will be on the lab then after finishing this first step training, mm. they will be on board the research vessel mm. to start practically 
on so they get this to do it practically yes for this. sure this okay. is the main importance they have to do it by themselves all right so then it simply means that after that lead was lifted that you know women could no longer you know um, uh, travel using the the, the 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 oceanographic vessels in mm -hmm. 1960 at least now it has sort of like created a level playing field we could say because now they could practically go there yes. and do it by themselves. Yes. And what is important also to say that we give the priorities for the girls for yes. this initiative. So please, we yes. need more to apply. Yes. And the reason has been well put out why this yes. is happening. Now, as we begin to 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 wind down, Dr. Susan, you had mentioned earlier that in Egypt, at least, and you touched on that institution that at least this is 40 percent of the girls who are getting to this field in spaces. What can Kenya borrow? Because 40, not quite there yet, but it's at least good enough, almost yes. half. Mm -hmm. What can Kenya borrow as far as getting women to these spaces that mm -hmm. were largely known as male-dominated fields mm -hmm. in areas? What I ask them to do is to struggle for what they, they, they need. Struggle? Yes, mm -hmm. because life is not easy. Okay. And it's, it isn't easy to be a leadership in this field. Mm -hmm. You have to be well well educated mm. have qualified mm -hmm. much of a skills mm. and start to say okay i could do that you will have a lot of blocks mm -hmm. but never make this stop you mm. go and complete and you will reach your point at the end this is this is what we all did mm -hmm. in our life yes, it's not are. only for for the marine science it's yes. for the whole life exactly it should be your strategy in your life yes. when if i need something i i put it as a target mm -hmm. and i work to go mm -hmm. for it we yeah. are as african yeah. women we are strong yeah yeah that's true comparing to other continents yeah. we are strong yes and we have this eager to do what we we would like and can't even say that we are multifaceted as women just by the own creation of how the woman you know is and looks like but i like what you're saying that and i even was writing it down that mm -hmm. there, there's going to be a lot of blocks yes but you gotta suffer through it mm -hmm. and i like to say anytime you have this um segment that as long as you're well educated and you can do it and you've been tried, tested, and proven. Mm. Nothing shall stop you from doing it. Nothing will stop you. Yeah. <laughs> Good place to end it that time. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your valuable input into this conversation. At least now we know even what oceanography is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And what this Thank you to be with you today. Yes. It was a great honor to be with yes. you. It was a pleasure hosting you. Thank you. All right. I have been speaking to Dr. Susan. El Garabawi, who's the Vice Chair UNESCO IOC Africa, that is the Intergovernmental Ocean Committee of Africa, also uh, the head of Marine Geophysics Department of National Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries that is in Egypt, definitely just also talking to us about the different programs that they are having in the country as far as just bringing on board many women into this field of science, engineering, mathematics, and also just looking at her story as far as getting to this position of influence and leadership which is what this segment is all about good place to end this conversation but good morning kenya definitely continues after this breather don't go anywhere stay with us